So I get my start with that. I get my grease from Papa Rick's in the five gallon buckets. I pour it into my 30 gallon oil container and it just pours through a screen to catch the big fry chunks and then this t-shirt with all the neck and arm holes sewed, sewed shut. And that just fills up until it gets to about uh, 25, 30 gallons. Then using uh, the vacuum pump on this, I basically suck the oil 25 gallons until it gets to this line here into the tank. You circulate it and you heat it up to about 130 degrees. Use the thermostat for that. While it's heating up, you mix the lye and methanol to make methoxide. Once it gets, Where do you get the methanol from? I get it from Bandamere. It's race fuel. Oh, okay. So you just go and buy it from the pump. Um, and then they fill up your jerry can with it. <clears throat> and that's what this valve is for. Once the methanol is done, that's what this is for. Mix the methoxide in here. It goes on. As it's pumping, you bleed in the methoxide, and that's to pressurize this so it helps push it in. <clears throat> Once the methoxide's in there, you let it circulate for um, about two hours, and then shut it down and let it sit, and it'll separate into two very distinct layers. And then you pour out the glycerin, and you use this bucket, um, until you get to biodiesel. And there's going to be a slight layer where there's a combination of both. <clears throat> Once you're the straight biodiesel, I pump it into the wash tank. And then I fill it up about 10 gallons with very warm water um, and use an aquarium bubbler to bubble um, air through it, to bubble the water up through it, which grabs any soap and glycerin left in it and collects in the water. And as you wash, it's called washing the biodiesel, as you wash the wash water will start, the first wash will be very hard to see through, it'll be more like 2% or whole milk, and as it gets clearer and clearer, you get down to where you can just see through it like water, and that's when you know you're done, and then it pumps into this tank, which has a heating element in it also, and I only run it in there for about three hours, and it just pumps around um, the biodiesel to heat it up to about 140 degrees, which clears it and it goes from a cloudier state like that to a see-through state where you can look right through it. And that's when it's done. And then you can pour it into the barrel here or pour it straight into your car. And the nice thing about biodiesel, it's essentially diesel. You can run it in any diesel vehicle, but the only downside being the cloud point is higher in that you can't run it um, as cold as re regular petroleum diesel. So. In the winter time, I'll have to do a blend of petroleum diesel and biodiesel. But for the summertime, it's not an issue. Cool. <clears throat> now, what do you do with the glycerin? Uh, and the glycerin has um, the glycerin is essentially soap, kind of like the gojo, but it also traps the methanol from the process, and you can't use it as soap because the methanol is poisonous. What I intend to do, what I got these metal barrels for, was that makes me able to heat it, which you can fractionally distill off the methanol and reclaim some of it. So if I heat it up to about 135, 140 degrees Fahrenheit through a condenser, you'd get some of the methanol out. And then there would be none left in the glycerin, and you could pour that through a t-shirt type filter and use it essentially as soap, mm. which is what this is. That's just hardened glycerin. Once all the methanol has been burned out of it. What about the... Uh... And this is, if you... Oh, okay. That's still liquid. You can hear it. So oh, that's yeah. about 10 gallons of essentially liquid glycerin because it still has a lot of the methanol in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about you said so you add, add lye to the the meth uh, to the uh, methanol to make the uh... yeah that makes the methoxide okay and where does the where does the lye go I mean is that transformed in some way during it the catalyzation just process into the that is the catalyst okay and so that's not being a chemist that ends up um, I think that is one of the things that's consumed in the process but how much lye do you would you normally add um. 
in a 25 gallon batch of oil, it ends up being about six to 700 grams of lye. So not a whole lot. You know, that's about uh, 15 to 18 ounces, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you do a slight chemical thing, because it, it depends on the quality of the oil, basically. What about your costs for the operation? There's the initial cost, the most of which was probably, honestly, the, the fittings were kind of expensive. Um, there's that initial cost outlay, but the only ongoing costs are lye and methanol. And the lion's share of the cost is the methanol. And that's currently about 260 a gallon. And not counting the cost of this, but just the straight sort of per, per gallon cost, it comes out to about 77 cents right now. And that's paying a lot for the, for the lye. That's buying it in small quantities. If I was to buy it in 50 pound bags, it would go down to about 68 cents a gallon uh, for biodiesel. Cool. Excellent, excellent. Any other, any other points? None so far. The car doesn't seem to care. It definitely seems, it smells different. It doesn't smell like petroleum diesel anymore. Mm -hmm. um, they say that uh, biodiesel is a better solvent than regular petroleum diesel. Uh, and they say one issue with running it in a car, usually a car with much higher miles, is that it actually acts as a solvent and will loosen up any deposited um, gunk basically from the last hundreds of thousands of miles you may have driven and uh, will then wash those forward so depending on the miles of the car they say well within a 500 to 1000 miles after start running biodiesel you should probably change the fuel filter but we haven't noticed anything in this car. And what You'd, you'd said something other, uh, earlier about um you know, with the newer diesels, you'd need to be careful about having really good biodiesel. What is that? Yeah, there's the newer, the newest diesels are called common rail diesels, and they depend. Uh, supposedly, they require very well refined diesel because it can't be of very high viscosity, just because of the incredibly high pressures. Um, mm. I think these injector nozzle pressures in this thing might be something like 4,000 psi. I think in a common rail diesel they might be pushing 11,000 oh wow and you, the cost to not getting it right in a common rail diesel is greater than a, a sort of traditional one like this this is supposedly one of the more forgiving vehicles when it comes to when it comes to a biodiesel the Volkswagen is an older Mercedes let me take a last look at the happy car Saving the earth and money. <laughs>